good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of the men's lounge you are here today you know it's a thursday and as far as 9 p.m you're going to come your way with very very brilliant uh, discussions let me remind you of something so today is international youth day you know how important the role of the youth is you know when it comes to society and participation in in in, in future you know um uh, i mean you the youth the youth's participation in, in the future is very critical and so it's something that you need to know about and the theme for this year's International Youth Day is transforming food systems, okay, food systems, youth innovation for human and planetary health. It's very important. And again, let me also remind you that at GMABC in this August, we are having the Insurance and Financial Literacy Series. We bring you tips and talks on insurance and financial literacy. Stay with us and get educated on all our platforms. That's Happy FM, ETV Ghana, and YFM. Insurance and finance is one of the things that, I mean, I mean basically that's what we are doing um, uh, from this month onwards. There will be more because we need to help you to, to, to plan, you know, how, where you put your money and everything. And let me remind you, this is being brought to you by Holad Insurance, okay? And so Holad brings us all these tips because they are very, very, very important. Let me start urging you uh, to join us on all our social media platforms, at ETV Ghana. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at ETV Ghana and you can be part of this show. I'm going to go on my very first break. When I come back, I'll introduce my guest and I'll tell you what people are saying. Today we'll be discussing a lot when it comes to insurance. Please stay with us. What's up? Since morning, you've not been looking fine. It looks like something is eating you out. That reminds me of this question. How do you manage your salary? We're on the same salary and at the end of the month, I'll be struck. I'll be struggling, but you, you still have some surplus. How do you manage? Today is 10th. My salary is finished. How do you I mean, manage? I, I just rely on a simple principle of budgeting. And the basics of budgeting, there are just three key things. Your salary, your expenses, and then your surplus. So assume um, our base pay or after tax and everything, our salary is left with 3,000, assuming. And at 3,000, I've subscribed to some investments. So say they take 500 a month, I'm now left with 2,500. And then I budget and then make expenses for the family, around say 1,005, 2,000 thereabouts. So one of the major things that's helping me also save money is buying in bulk. So in the end of the month, if I buy in bulk, I might even not spend the entire 1,005 or 2,000 I allocated for family expenses and I'll get surplus. So after that, I also make sure I leave 500 cities in my account every single okay. month. Those are for emergencies. Okay. And if there is an emergency, I know I have something to fall back on. So that 500 cities also compound as in months and year in, year out. And I'm having always something to rely on. That makes me sound. So I just make sure I live within my means. And um, mostly buying in bulk, as, as, I, as I said earlier, also helps. And I don't spend what I don't have. If it's not essential for me to spend i don't and i prevent impulse buying so i'm always sticking to my budget drawing up plans what i need for the month what i need to spend my money on and if you stick to that routine you are saved you get to invest you get to save for emergencies and then you get to provide for your family too with just a simple process of budgeting just the three basics knowing your salary knowing your expenses and then knowing your surplus and if you do that, you are good to go. My name is Emmanuel. And um, the, the, the subject of budgeting is very important because uh, budgeting ha helps you to keep physical discipline. If you are, um, I mean, a family person, you need to ensure that money is not wasted. You need to ensure that uh, money is appropriately used for what it's supposed to be used for. And so for me, I, as a family person, I, I think that budgeting is very important because it's what I, I practice in, in my house. Okay, so uh, things about uh, uh, utility, uh, food, um, all, 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 all very important items, I mean, at home. Uh, I ensure that there's budgets, proper budgeting, money is allocated to whichever item that I think that is essential in the home. And it, it, it helps me to keep physical discipline. It helps me not to waste money. It also ensures that my kids understand that money is, 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 is very important, therefore, Money has to be used uh, appropriately. My name is Alex Larry. I'm working in a construction firm. Mm, but our money there, in fact, is very small. We can't reach our uh, distant budgeting. See, but uh, after all, it's not me alone. It's everybody is complaining. So, I think if something can be done, it'd be better. Now we are suffering. As a human being, you know, 
anything at all you do, you have to budget whatever you do. I mean, if let's assume maybe you, you've received your salary, you know how you, you're going to budget with your, I mean, with yourself, and then if you have family aside, you know how to budget, I mean, buying your groceries, I mean, paying your uh, utility bills and other stuff. You, you, you need to budget everything well so that at least, I mean, after all, after all your expenses, you, 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 can, you can save something. In the month, one month any they pay me my salary, I, I try to do budget on things that I have to do in my house, pay my children's school fees, their feeding fees, and also the things that we have to use at home. So I think when you put budget or you budget for, your, um, for yourself, it will help you. All right, so I'm sure the scenario you saw and then what people are saying already tells you what we'll be discussing today. And so tonight we are looking at budgeting and how it can help us create wealth, okay? Achieving long-term financial stability requires a much more holistic approach. And so tonight, there are two wonderful men in the studio with me. And uh, one of them, James Corsa Brown, he's a financial advisor. James, Akwaba. Yeah. It's been a while. You haven't been through the lounge in a long time. Of course. Uh, yeah. Be, uh, are, are you dissociating yourself because of the the pandemic so oh that pandemic been, we'll, we'll, sack, we'll sack we'll sack that pandemic <laughs> soon i've been hiding from the system for uh, you should hide it's very important yeah. uh, once it helps you keep safe you are good to go isn't it of course i like that everything. i also have with me a fine gentleman uh in the name benjamin kofi kwanza benjamin happens to be a financial and grant management specialist ben Aquaba, you know how we do the poser. Like that. <laughs> Thank you. Charlie, Thank you. his arm and my arm. I feel like. <laughs> my <laughs> 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 All right, so I did mention earlier, and I repeat again feel free to join us on all our social media platforms at ETV Ghana. So, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at ETV Ghana, you can find us there. We are discussing budgeting. Okay, something that obviously should lead us to creating uh, some financial, I mean, for, some wealth for ourselves. In the end, it, I don't think it really matters how much you're earning. But I'm sure these two men are here to do justice to why we are here. So, once again, Akwaba, how's the week been? Uh, it's been a, a rainy week, mm. of course. It's well, it's been raining in your area, because eh? yeah. some places in Akar, there's only today. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, so it's been raining like almost the whole week. Uh, in Tema. In, in Tema. Tema yeah, I so see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Anyway, so let's start this way. How do we define budgeting and why is it so important? James, you want to take it? Let's go. Yeah, I mean, um, the definition is, is, is fairly simple. Mm. It's just a tenor structure of revenue, revenue and expense. Okay. So the timing have to be definite. Mm -hmm. You have to know that you are dealing with revenue and expense, not salary and expense. Okay. And per what we, we saw, a lot of people <laughs> were talking <laughs> about salary, salary. salary and I kept <laughs> laughing like... <laughs> Revenue is never equal to or even equivalent to, to salary. To yeah. salary. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. and, and there are different types as well. It's either you are doing activity based. You need to understand even the type of budget you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. So it's either you are doing activity based or zero based or value proposition. There are different types. So based on the kind of budget you go in for, we define the structure. Mm -hmm. Then it helps you to build on it. I see. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure we will definitely be looking at the basic ones. Obviously, that is what most of us want to discuss. But let me go to Ben. Ben. He tried to define, you know, budgeting. Does it lie in your thought as well as same? Is it that simple, or there's some something more? Yeah, it does. And um, what I want to say is that mm -hmm. the teacher in me will not <laughs> allow me to jump into defining a budget. Okay without laying the foundation. So let's lay the foundation. We are going to lay the foundation. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's this passage in the Bible that I love so much. Uh -huh. Anytime I talk about budgeting, yeah. I make reference to that. Okay. And you find it in Luke 14, 28. Luke 14, 28. Yes. Mm. Jesus posed the question. He said, which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first? and count the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. Lest, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, others begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and could not complete it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at this passage carefully, number one, he says, which of you? So it's an individual thing, a personal thing. Mm -hmm. Then number two, he says, intending to build. 
So there's the intention there. Mm. And then also cost. So take intent. It's about a plan. What is a plan? A set of objectives. Mm -hmm. What are objectives? Things that we need to do well if we want to succeed. So how much is it going to cost me to implement my plan or objective? So when I express my plan in terms of money, it becomes a budget. Okay. So I will look at a budget as a plan that is expressed in terms of money. And like he already rightly said, it's for a definite period. So a it's definite period. An advance of a period. So we are in August. You may prepare a budget for September, October, till December, or even for 2022. Mm -hmm. The budget would have to show your income. In the advert we saw, they were making reference to salary. <laughs> it goes beyond salary. It goes so beyond you need salary. to look at your income that mm. you want to generate. Mm. You need to look at the expenses that you want to incur. And then, if there's any money that you want to invest, the budget would capture that. All in an attempt to attain a given objective. Mm. So to answer your question, budgeting is about making plans for the future implementing those plans and monitoring activities to make sure they conform to the plan. Mm, so you don't go out of line. Exactly. Mm. But in your own simple term, in your own simple words, well, well, how important is budgeting? Budgeting gives us a sense of direction. Mm. It helps us to regulate our spending. Mm -hmm. It enables us to clarify our responsibilities. For example, in the household, if I want to do budgeting, I need to take into account the needs of the members of my family. Mm. And I treat them, each person, as a budget center. Okay. Because we have different needs. Mm -hmm. If you look at budget center within the organization, organizational setup, it's a segment of the organiza organization that is designated for budgetary purposes. So for the household, each person is a budget center. I look at their needs and based on the needs, I assign money to each of them. I have my budget right there. So that gives me a sense of direction and it makes me more responsible mm -hmm. in my spending. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. James, so you, you know when, when you were speaking, I did say that I, I would want us to stick, stick to the basic so the basic, the yes, basic. Yes. I don't want us to go into of course, of because course. the basic is the one that you and I, I mean, me and the other guys yes. will need. So, so talking about the basic, how how does one get started with budgeting? Um, there is one called the zero base, and I, I believe that one will be most appropriate mm, mm. because activity based. Then we have to delve into other areas. Yes. Okay. And I would like to pick it from where my brother mm. started. He made mention of a budget center where the, the, fi the financial analysts will call it the cost center. The cost centers, okay. Exactly, you know, because all of them are going to generate costs. Cost. They're not going to add to the bottom line. Mm. So there is a cost center taking the family into consideration. So we are going to the basics now. Yeah. So you have to cost everything. Light, water, everything, okay. Definitely apply a certain margin because uh, you, you never know. Mm. Something can definitely... Some, some could go exactly a little higher. Yeah, so some, you have to yeah. apply a certain margin. Mm. So all of that is the cost, cost center. Mm. They have the revenue center. The revenue center, now you are looking at uh, what our colleagues said on TV. Mm. Salary, that's the most common one. We, mm. we definitely have to do a research on that because most people think <laughs> revenue is equal to salary, salary, but that's not the case. What, what's the difference in that in that regard? I'm mean, talking about the you know talking about the basics. Obviously, we are dealing with one person, human, and so exactly. what would be the difference so in that I'll regard? Explain. I mean, when we were in school, we did the universal set and, and subset. So mm -hmm. the revenue is like the universal set. Yeah. Okay. Then the subset is the salary. Oh. Okay. It's not so the other way around. So let me make it simple. In budgeting, you are doing inflows and outflows. Okay. So the inflow is everything that comes in or adds to your position. Mm -hmm. So salary is actually one of them. Okay. Maybe you have a, a, an auntie who gives you a gift, gives you a thousand Ghana cities every month. Mm. Y it's something you're also earning. So it's part of the, the it's revenue. It's part of the inflow. The inflows. Okay, mm. so all the inflows are like revenue component. Okay. So you, you talk about the outflows as well, which is the expense. Mm -hmm. Like my brother said, the cost center. So all of them are going to generate costs. Mm -hmm. 
uh, expenses on our parents, insurance, and all that. So all of them are going to generate. But you have always have to make sure that your outflow, which is your revenue, is in excess or is more than your, your cost center or your expense. Mm. So you have to generate a positive position. I don't know if you, you get where I'm trying I'm to getting it. So your revenue <coughs> should be more than your cost. Yeah. But in most cases, you see people will rely on their salary. So you typical bank account of uh, you know an individual here, you, ha you have credit, which is the, re uh, the salary, which is the only representation of the revenue. Mm. Then the rest are debit, debit, debit. debit, debit that's debit. expense, expense, yeah. expense, expense, expense. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that becomes very you know dicey for you to survive, especially if you don't plan. And one of the things that uh, I wanted to bring to this table today, because I wanted us to decouple the concept of budgeting and wealth creation. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you have an excess, then it can contribute to your wealth creation. creation. One thing that a lot of people don't actually do is treating the component called savings as an expense. Okay. After you have, you have uh, 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 given positions or after you have applied numbers to the cost center, mm. one of the things you shouldn't, sh you shouldn't forget to do every month is to make sure that you are actually treating your savings as also a cost. Mm. So usually after you've taken your SNATE and your contribution to tier two or tier three or whatsoever, the next contribution you probably have to do before you even pay your light bill is to probably keep about 10% of that net position in savings for a rainy day. Mm. Because you remember what happened when there was COVID. A lot of people were laid off. Yeah. Those who had that position or those who had the privilege of being able to keep that 10% away were the guys who were able to survive for some time. Yeah. But those who were just doing hand to mouth, salary, everything goes down the, down the drain to ground zero. It was or tough. sometimes even expenses in excess of revenue and they have to really find a way to mm. finance it. They had issues. Mm -hmm. So you always create an excess of revenue compared to expense. Mm. But when it comes to wealth creation, I'm, I'm not sure, have we veered into wealth creation already? No, not yet, but you can go on. Yeah, so um, three main ways of creating wealth. Mm -hmm. And I believe we all have to take note of that. You are doing three types of investment. Investments will enable you to create wealth mm -hmm. because that's the extra thing you are doing from your main hustle or your main job. Yeah. So one of the key ways is to invest in the money market. In the money market, I'm talking about the banks, uh, what's the name? Uh, you have treasury bill from central bank. You have the fixed deposit, some people call it the time deposit. That's just an example. Mm, because mm. It, it is a short term obligation. Yeah, yeah. You know, usually a month, three months, six to, a to year. like a year. Yeah. Okay? So you can, you can earn some decent uh, mm. position in the 14, 12%, depending on the volume mm. that you are, you are mm. investing. Mm. Then you can also look at the capital market. Okay. Ghana Stock Exchange is right here. Market capitalization stands about 54 million. People are still investing, investing and some of the companies are actually doing very well. Okay. You know, so you can just monitor or get a specialist to do placement for you when it comes to the secondary market. That is if you don't want to be mm. in the primary position. Mm. Then the other bit which actually m earns people more is investing in the real sector. When okay. I say the real <coughs> sector, it's all about trying to identify your strength what people will say, the God-given strength, mm. and leveraging on that God-given strength to generate something. Okay. Those who thrive on their passion actually make far more than those who just get employed by virtue of certificates. Mm. So that is why people who have decent talent, very good talent, like the footballers and all that, are making much more. Mm, mm, mm. That's very true. Yes. That's very true. So three main blocks, capital market, money market, then you can look at the real sector. The real sector. It mm. doesn't really matter where. I mean, you can still be a permanent worker of whatever institution. You can still activate your side hustle, like what the boys call it, the side hustle. Mm. You have people working, uh, doing nine to five, and they have uh, phone shops. They have mobile money uh, uh, joint. They are doing uh, this uh, uh, dispatch business. Yeah, even people you people know? close from work at five and still go do some two or three hours yeah. of Uber before they, yeah, exactly. they, 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 they go home. So, so yeah. the concept is, and I like the term wealth creation because it is just one side of uh, your revenue that you are not even touching at all. Mm. The revenue that comes to the budget, you have to touch it. The expense will eat it up. But when it comes to wealth creation, you are talking about the, the, the bit of the revenue that is not touched. It just compounds. 
you know, you are investing in the treasury bill is compounding. You mm. put one CD there, tomorrow you get two, two CD. Just okay. an example. Okay. Capital markets, the same. The same. Then when it comes to the real sector, but the real sector, you need to be an expert. Don't just invest. Because somebody somebody's doing it. Yeah. Put no, no, no. It <laughs> has to be something that you need to understand what you are doing. Mm. Then remotely, you can actually monitor the business. So I else, see. if you are not an engineer, you start an engineering company, you em employ engineers. <laughs> they will generate and spend at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you come back to ground zero. And, and so then you'll be asking more questions. Exactly. Okay, yeah. so, 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 Benjamin, with all that uh, James has told us, what are some of the methods when it comes to budgeting? Okay. So let me just add on to Please go ahead. What the point he made about the real hmm. sector. Yeah. I, I loved it. And the reason is that sometimes when we talk about wealth, we narrow it down to money, having money, some fat mm. <laughs> amount in your bank account, yeah. or having some fancy car. Mm. It goes beyond yeah. that. Yeah. What are you passionate about? What's your purpose in life? Have you identified that purpose? Are you growing to reach your potential? Are you sowing seeds that will benefit others? You earn more from your passion mm. than the regular 9 to 5 p.m. job. So I love that bit. Thank you. <laughs> 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 so, so let's come back to yeah, the methods. Yeah, so talking about the methods of budgeting, we could look at the balanced money formula. Okay. And that is based on a rule of thumb. But then you look at your needs and then your wants. So the balanced money formula looks at a 50, 30, 20 rule. Mm. What it says is that 50% of your spending should be on your fixed expenses. Those are needs. You cannot live without them. Shelter, you have to pay rent. Mm. You have to pay insurance. Perhaps some mortgage that you need to take care of. So 50% of your income should be spent on those fixed expenses. No, no, hold on. 50% of your expenses should of be your income on the fixed... Of, of your income. Of your income. Should be on the fixed expenses, okay. sorry. And then 30% should be on your variable expenses. Mm. Those are wants. We can do without, without them. them. It is the case of saying all things are lawful for me but not all things are expedient we can avoid them mm. so what we can do with the variable expenses is to trim them just to ensure that all our expenses are covered by our revenue or income okay and then the 20 percent should go into savings mm. you don't spend but like you rightly said you treat that one too as a cost so the savings, 20% savings will go to meet your emergencies and your retirement and other things. That is one very important method of budgeting that we can apply. Mm. Then mm. he did mention zero-based budgeting, more like saying give every dollar a job to do. So these are two main budgeting methods that I can um, talk about i mean so putting putting all that you have said together it's it's it seemed to me that you can actually budget your way to health i mean to wealth yeah, of course. absolutely mm. yeah Th there, there can't be any point in life that well as that means as far as you include the savings aspect as uh, as a budget then you're ob obviously of budgeting course. your way to wealth yes that's and and that becomes that that becomes your foundation mm. i mean wealth creation it says wealth creation. So you need to you need to create it. It it won't happen to you on a silver platter. Yeah. Mm. You need to create it, and mm. that is why, like I rightly said, you you need to take that savings position as as an expense. And what actually people do, and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll share this for free. The same savings they take a loan against it, <laughs> and they use it to acquire assets. And they deploy that asset to generate revenue. Mm, That's mm. beautiful. That's like a double edge yeah. uh, system. Because your savings will be there and you will be working with the bank's money. Yeah. And the interest comes at concessionary. Sometimes imagine it's just about 5%. Yeah. But 
the concept of wealth, wealth creation, like we, we've rightly said, is, is about generating and compounding. So once you have your savings, that is actually the foundation. And you also have assets. Assets like this uh, dispatch. Uh, what moto, those who are in the dispatch business, mm -hmm. they have this moto. Mm -hmm. side. That's an asset. It mm. will generate. I know people who generate not less than 2000 a day from just three motorbikes. Mm. And you can imagine how much they can make. And those same people are actually working elsewhere and making about 2000 a month. Mm -hmm. So they are making their salary in like a day or two by just making sure that they invest in there. But they yeah. got the formula right because they have a certain base and that is a saving that they've been able to accrue for a certain period. Another asset that we should al always make sure that we deploy properly is um, investing in ourselves. Mm. Okay, investing in ourselves. You have to know that if you have, if you have finished your master's let's say five years ago the value is not the same mm -mm. now no mm -hmm. at all <laughs> you understand <laughs> you always have to make sure that you're nourish or you activate that you upgrade uh, yourself in, in exactly mm. that intangible asset yeah and the reason why i say this is you know even being in class with people gives you not that network and in business you say your network is your network worth yeah so you, you are you are you are you are creating that net worth and you are generating net worth net worth and net worth is uh, the uh, wealth creation actually feeds into your network. It's mm. like an equity. Mm. Okay, so it is one of the strategic ways to also make sure that you get a value uh, cre creation well, and also making sure that once you upgrade yourself, mm -hmm. you associate. If it's if it's a professional course, you sit very well in the association. If it comes to consultancy and all that, you have other entities mm. that will come in to, uh, you know, request for your service. And once the request for your service, you definitely execute and you charge yep. a fee. And you charge, yeah. Then you also move something to your savings. And that is, you know, so it keeps compounding. Yeah. And that is how the whole concept is about. It's actually very refreshing. Mm. I mean, when you start creating wealth, you close up. One of my friends, you just have to close your mind for a year. <laughs> okay. And just go and check your account. And before you know it, you are there. You yeah. ask yourself, <laughs> are you really the one who did <laughs> you smile? You understand? But here, yeah, people give a lot of attention to expense. And mm. that is what I see in, in our economy. There are a lot of opportunities, but people people just leave their uh, salaries in their account or their revenues in their account. They've connected their mobile money number to their account mm -hmm. number. They've connected their ATMs to their... They've connected everything. All the devices that will help you to spend and are connected all, to your account. So it all shows debit, 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 debit. debit, debit. debit. <laughs> However, you don't have any infrastructure yeah. That will rather support you to rather end to your account. So mm. instead of moving money out of the account, they are rather have to be an infrastructure that connects uh, earnings into, into your account. Their account. Yeah, that is how. It's so as much as possible, you reduce cost and increase revenue. Okay. You so do. you reduce cost and then you increase revenue. I'm going to go on this break. Please stay with us. We'll be back shortly with more. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are here discussing budgeting and then our way to creating health for uh, wealth for ourselves. And I'm still here with uh, Benjamin and James doing a lot of justice to the discussion. These guys, they know too much about money. Uh, sometimes it scares me, but to be in there. They are my friends too, you see. <laughs> anyway, guys, so you know how uh, there's an account proverb that says Okafodidi, right? So let's. I want to relate it to budgeting and then creating wealth. So this is me who wants to obviously follow the basics of budgeting. And uh, through that, already we said your savings should be part of the budget that you make. And so I want to, in the end, also create wealth. But I owe some people, you get it, what do I do first? Do I consider paying off the debts before I, 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 I begin to you know, try to make some wealth or create wealth? Or which one do I do? How do I go about it? Okay, so first of all, we need to understand that debt in itself mm. is a source of finance. Source of finance that you can use for your operating activities. Ah, would they say how? Because the, they've <laughs> given you the money. Uh -huh. People have given you the money, so you can use it. No, but the money there has been used already. <laughs> so, so if it's been used, I just want us to understand or uh, lay the foundation mm -hmm. that debt in itself is a source of finance. Okay. Right. Now, when do you have to pay the debt? 
is it a high interest debt? Mm -hmm. So for high interest debts, because you don't want the interest to accumulate, mm -hmm. you need to pay off those things, okay. those ones first. Mm. There are other debts that maybe the people you are owing are not chasing you mm -hmm. all over the place to pay. You have some time mm -hmm. to pay off. So you could take advantage of that mm -hmm. credit period and then use their money for some time, do your savings. By the time they are ready to collect their money, you would have generated some interest on the money that you've saved to pay them off. Mm -hmm. So it depends on whether the debt is high interest debt or low interest or no interest at, at all. all. Okay. Yeah. So see. that's a submission that I want to make. So, 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 so now that it depends on that, fine, that's, that's noted. So the debt is there. I want to make what and I want to budget what. Which one do I consider first? Do I pay off my debt first? So I would advise that you pay off your debt if the funds are available to do so. Mm. If they are not available, mm -hmm. then you can enter into um, some form of arrangement with the people you are owing. So they give you a credit period and then you stagger the payment mm -hmm. whilst you save a little bit of your income that you... Actually, that's what where I was going to. So I was going to ask that... that, that um, so having made the decision that you want to obviously pay off the debt, which one is good? Pay it off at all at once or try to, you know, pay it in bits? So if you have the funds available and you can pay off mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. then I would advise that you go ahead and pay so you can have your peace of mind. Peace of mind <laughs> in itself is wealth rich. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So, you know, when, when you spoke earlier, you did talk about emergency fund mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah. What exactly, I, 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 if you ask me a lame person, I would say, okay, probably it has to do with your pension, or, but I, I suspect it, there's more. What is that emergency fund and why is it that important when it comes to budgeting? Actually, the emergency fund is also a fraction or a percentage mm. of the wealth that you have created, the liquid wealth. Okay. Okay. And when I say liquid wealth, I mean the money mm. that you've been able to save over time. So usually people take about 30%. They allocate 30 percent for emergency mm. so you typically have a health insurance card but it doesn't cover all diseases mm -hmm. so maybe you have a certain accident that it doesn't cover mm. then definitely that 30 percent is there to cushion you okay you know irrespective but i would like to have a bite on uh, what my brother said about yeah. the uh, the loan uh, yeah. uh, engagement you know once you are taking a loan or mm -hmm. a facility it mm -hmm. comes with a, a certain interest component so let's assume it's now it's 20 25 percent borrowing from a bank um, if you have critical investments to do especially in the real sector and your return is about 40 percent about 30 percent then uh, the, the funding gap is actually ne uh, positive that's the next revenue from fund mm. um, <coughs> I would prefer that you still continue the borrowing engagement because you'll be creating wealth because if you are borrowing for just 20 and the return from it's about 40. the business is about 40 that's about 20 percent gap in there and that is not using your own money that's using somebody unless the person is stressing you mm. if the person is stressing you it's, it's different yeah. but if it's just a loan arrangement or a loan see most of the companies in ghana actually take funding or they take loan to invest in a, a capex buy pl uh, machines and all that you understand i mean M mps did one point something billion yeah. dollars in yeah. expansion now look at uh, the vessels coming to Terminal 3. Charlie, it's serious. You know, and and you know, they are, they are working, they yeah. are even working, I mean, even on weekends. Yeah, it's difficult to take funds out of your working capital, which mm. is short term, to do this long term kind of investment. Yeah. So it depends on your funding gap position. So if you believe that the industry that you are investing in, averagely, the return is about 40-30%, or you can make something in excess of the interest you're going to pay, then for me, I, I'll prefer that you keep you keep the the loan position mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you'll be generating you'll be generating uh, wealth from there. The twenty percent gap in there can be invested into the wealth creation. So it all depends. But there are instances where people take funds from some institutions and a month they are paying about six percent, eight percent, and if you analyze it, that's about seventy something percent. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, your business is not even any up to five percent per month. Mm -hmm. the, the net revenue from fund is actually negative. Your funding gap 
is 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 is, is in a mess. So you know, then so the business of just going to dip. Exactly, you are working for that institution. Yeah. So it it all depends on the scenario. Mm. Um, I know that there are some banks that actually advance or some institutions that advance loan to their 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 staff at five percent. Okay, so people actually take the loan from their institution at five percent, and they will invest it in treasury bill for thirteen percent. Mm. So they are just playing with the fund, and their mm. net revenue from fund position is just seven percent. So they are creating wealth out of that. Mm. So those are the scenarios we definitely have to look at. Interesting. Let, let's let's come back to the business. Let's come back home. So you know, when 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 we spoke, we, I mean, you started. We you, we mentioned budgeting in regards to also. Um, looking at the needs and then your wants, all right. Obviously, the the the, the needs are what carries that fifty percent. Then your wants, obviously, can, are things that you can forego. Yeah. Now, coming back to the basics, okay, and coming back home, what are some of the things we can avoid or we can do to avoid overspending? Live within your means. Hmm. You have an income that you've generated, you've captured your expenses. Always make sure that whatever you spent is covered by your income. Mm. Under no circumstance should you spend more than what you've generated. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you'd, you'd always find yourself in trouble. That peace of mind <laughs> will be lost. You won't get it. And then your world creation dream will be mm. shattered mm. so live within your expenses mm. you can also look at your variable expenses you can do without some of them so you trim them and it will help you to avoid overspending mm. 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 so um I'm, I'm looking at the implementation of um, activity-based budget so very soon we'll enter september mm and you know the series of activities you are supposed to undertake. Mm -hmm. Once you're able to put those activities in proper perspective, you'll be able to see the needs and the wants, like my brother said. Mm. It makes it very easy okay. to be able to uh, identify the needs and the wants and be able to place values on them. So you know that week one, you have a conference. You understand? So, And this is the amount you're going to spend when it comes to food and all that. If it's ad hoc, it, be, it, it becomes problematic. Then this person will call you with this and all that. But if it is if it's a strict activity-based budget, then you know that you need to live within that confinement. But for me, I always encourage people that they should rather make more than worry about their expense. Yeah. You should rather go all out and make more than worry about your expense. Mm. As for their expense, they will definitely I come. And they will always increase. They, uh, yes. And the unfortunate can happen. Mm. We don't control our, our destiny. Yeah. What does. Yeah. The unfortunate can happen anytime. So, uh, I mean, when it comes to the expense, yes, you can manage it, but you, you don't have 100% control. But other, another thing that you can actually have more than 100% control is generating the revenue so that you don't need to worry too much about your expense. Mm. Mm. Exactly. So mm. activity-based budget is very, very important. Okay. Make sure that you put all the activities in proper perspective. You identify the needs and the want, like my brother rightly said. You mm. put the figures, you place the figures on them. Don't actually do it a four-month position. Do it week on week so that you can actually track yourself properly. Okay. Uh, you don't go out. Okay. 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 So, so me being, being men as we are, obviously, uh, one of our, our core power lies on money because then being seen as the figure heads, the, the, the head of the house and everything. You, you have to have money to run the home to some extent. If not, probably about 70 to 80% to that extent, you need to have money to be able to run the home. So, and, and you hear people talk about my salary is not enough, I can't save, I can't... Do. It kind of feels like there is some, some, some money mistakes that, you know, some, some of us are making. What are some of these common money mistakes? that we are making so much that we are not able to save, we are not able to budget well. Wh what are these things? What are those mistakes? You see, if we fail to understand income, that would have some of these problems. Mm. If we rely on salary as our only source of income, mm -hmm. it will never be enough to take care of our expenses. So we need to broaden the scope of income 
it should include your salary. There may be other things you are doing on the side. So you have your active income, mm -hmm. which is from your regular work. You may have investments, <coughs> which is generating some interest for you. You may be even be receiving cash gifts from friends, from family. You need to put all these things together to increase your income. Then you can begin to talk about your expenses. But if you focus on just one income, you would always have a situation where you, sp you spend more than you are generating. Mm. That is one big money mistake that we make. Another mistake is where we fail to plan with the people who are affected by the budget. As one of the benefits of budgeting is coordination, mm -hmm. coordinating the activities of the various people within the family. Where the expenditure is going, exactly. expense is going so into coordinating as well. The needs of my kids, the mm -hmm. needs of my wife, mm -hmm. my own needs, and then bring all together, work together, plan together. Mm -hmm. That way, I'm able to respond to every need. Yeah. And I can have <coughs> my peace of mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ben yeah. never leaves yeah. his peace of mind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Peace <laughs> of mind is very important. Let me hear you. Let's hear you. The, the, I think the other bit is also uh -huh. um, <laughs> our inability to convert the cost center to revenue center. Mm hmm because um, typically if you're a man and you're married and you, you have to you need to understand that your wife is also a human resource of the family okay so don't take everything on your shoulder you can actually resource her to generate and contribute to the pool mm, mm. but you know most men would like to to flex their muscle like yeah. i'm the man of I'm the, the house i want to show that everything you're a joke <laughs> 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 and one day you collapse and you are gone exactly <laughs> you know so uh we, we you need to you need, to, you need to look at the cost center yeah. as well and see which part of the cost center you can actually convert to a revenue center. Mm. And I believe the wife that God has given you should be able to do that. Apart from the 9 to 5 that she probably does, or if even she, she's working from home, mm -hmm. and she, let's say she's a seamstress or whatsoever, yeah. you can give her money to buy materials and sell mm -hmm. alongside what she's doing, and it generates est something extra. Okay. So uh, it's one of the the, the, the the biggest mistakes I think uh, some men actually do. Okay. Thinking that they can shoulder everything at, at home. And then they end up just collapsing. <laughs> just <laughs> collapsing. Well, so that's when yeah. we involve our spouses to it helps us. Mm. Uh -huh. But you try to be secretive and you run into difficulties. And then you'll be there struggling. Uh -huh. And then you have the peace of mind. You have the peace of mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have peace of mind. <laughs> All right, so this is coming from um, uh, Josie Fina. And it says... Fantiman Youth has your back together with Build. I'm sure some one of you understands and I'm sure it's, it's for James. <laughs> and then this is also coming from Michael um, Dabia Bounce um, White. And he says, Mr. Host, please don't call him James. Okay, I will not call him James. Um, please call him Fantiman Moses. So Fantiman hey, Moses well, or Corsa uh, uh, Bro Bill. I don't know which one that is, but uh, popularly known. So that's how you're known as Fantiman Moses, I see. Oh, yeah. James, did, he didn't tell us this one. <laughs> <laughs> and so this one is also from um, Brapia. Brapia says, I love the show. Your guests are super good. This is also coming from, well, kindly add your name next time. I love your program, Papa. Papa. Thank you so much for being part of it. So I'm going to go on the very last. When I'm back, the phone lines will be open. I'll announce the phone lines. And then please feel free, call us, share your thoughts, ask questions, and then we'll take it from there. Please stay with us. Well, so welcome back, and uh, at this point, the phone lines are open. The number is 555 I repeat, 555 Feel free to call us, share your thoughts, ask questions, and then we can take it from there. You know, there's, there's this... Unfortunately, I, 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 we, I, we do not have enough time, eh? but let me, let, me, let me ask you this. What would be your advice, okay, to anyone who wants to, at least, I mean, after listening to us and wants to, apply you know the budgeting thoughts and also to lead us to creating or, or i mean creating wealth what would be your advice to anyone so what i want to say is that wealth creation is not automatic mm. you need to be intentional about it 
and the word intentional means you have to be purposeful okay. you need to be deliberate mm. deliberate action is required on your part so with that intentionality also make sure that you are living within your, your means. means that mm. is very very critical okay ben you have to hold on for me there's a caller good evening caller your name and where you're calling from Yes, please. My name is Sherry from Benfoman. Hi, Sherry. Please, let's hear you. Yes, please. Uh, back to the budget thing. I would like to understand, uh, since budget thing covers various aspects of our life, uh -huh. for a new person in a relationship who probably has a family where they both have their personal things in terms of what, you know, from different people, how do they come together and create a budget that fits their future? Okay, so Sheriff, if, if I got you clearly, when when you are saying when when you are with your partner and uh, yes. you're both, uh, you know, um, working out your own stuff, how do you come together to create a budget? Is that what you're asking? Exactly. Okay, I mean, thank you, Sheriff. I'm sure um, Benjamin and then James will deal with that. Very well. Thank you. So, you heard him. Yeah. You and your partner. It's obvious you are doing something. Partner is also mm -hmm. doing So how do you come together? to, you know, come up with a budget to support the home. That's what he's trying to, you know. To support the home or the business? Well, I, I didn't hear him mention business, but let's extend it if there's a need. So the partner in this case is the wife? Obviously, or girlfriend. I think he mentioned girlfriend. Girlfriend, mm. so... Unless okay. I didn't hear. Sherry, if, it's, if, it's, if I'm not right, please correct me. <laughs> <laughs> it's work, work, work in progress. Uh, um, okay, so let me, let me take this. I think, for me, the activity-based one will will play a critical role. Mm. Yes. Mm. And it depends on what you are going to spend on. Once they are not together as husband and wife, so it depends on... Uh, I, don't, I don't actually know what their needs. I don't know whether they are planning their wedding or they are already <laughs> together. So <laughs> just let me hold you on, on this <laughs> one. Good evening, caller. Your name and where you are calling from? Uh, hello, good evening. I'm Ebo Poku Jr. calling from Mpantumai, All right, please let's hear you. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm really enjoying the program. Let me get your, your, your panelists. Your partner, especially my boss, James Casamel. Okay. Hi, hi, boss. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying you. And I'm really enjoying the program. Okay, it's all right. Good. It's, it's a nice program for them, for we men and husbands and those who want to enter to a family. Mm. It's good. Mm. It's, we, we really appreciate the advice, especially the investment in the investment advice and the budget to the family. Okay, but okay. I'd pay me on this list. Okay. Uh, I'm like any, any uh, bad debt and those kind of stuff. All right. We really right. thank you. We encourage you to bring more. Yeah. We'll do that for you. To manage our things. We'll, we'll do that for you. Thank you so much for calling. We appreciate your call. Yes. So at this point, I'm probably going to ask you to share your last words, your last thoughts, because uh, I need to draw the curtains soon. James, let me start with you. Okay, um, I want to encourage everybody mm. to focus more on the revenue side of, of, of budgeting, like I, I've said. I mean, uh, money market, capital markets, then you can also look at the real sector. For the real sector, just look at where your strength is, what your God-given talent is, and go into a business that you believe you can even manage remotely. It shouldn't be about what somebody tells you that, oh, way here, way here, and now way here, no. It's about what you believe in and what you what you think that you can use your raw talent to actually nurture and and uh, and bring out something. Then once you're able to do that, it's easy to to build wealth. But building wealth is not just about liquid assets like money. It's also about acquisition of other assets that you can use to generate more of the wealth. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave all right, there. Benjamin, your last words. <coughs> Live within your, your means. means so that you can have. Peace, Peace of, of mind. mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on this note, I'm going to draw down the curtains, but you know I'm full of surprises. So, so I'm giving you this from Cheesy Pizza. So go buy any Cheesy Pizza stop points and take some pizza to Madam at home. Thank you. All right, so on this note, I'm going to draw the curtains and I'd, I'd thank all of you for being part of uh, the show. Thanks to all, all of the callers and thank you to Hollard Insurance for being a sponsor on our insurance and uh, c uh, insurance series month um, we'll come back your way next week with another exciting topic please stay with us keep safe covid is still in the corner and let's see each other next week good night